Welcome to Face to Face. And today we're going to speak with uh, the Japanese community. I'm with David, and we're going to talk about uh, Tulelec uh, and the big action in New York City uh, Council. Um, so, David, welcome to Face to Face. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, which one you want to prefer? You want to prefer? Why don't, to we, why don't we discuss Tule Lake okay. Committee first? All okay. right. All right. Um, because that one, there. Um, there are a number of challenges, mm -hmm. and I think that was a little shorter, so that would be good. Okay. All right. So, Tule Lake Committee, uh, who is that? Why were they formed? And that, but can you explain a little bit the camp? Yeah. The, okay. The so, Tule Lake was one of the um, ten incarceration centers mm -hmm. during World War II. During World War II, mm -hmm. and with Executive Order Nine Zero Six Six, which was issued by Roosevelt. The Japanese Americans were um, rounded up, and within five days they had to take any possession that they had. So that meant that, you know, you can't take too much. And they were then uh, herded onto trains, buses, whatever transportation they could find. And the, what you should be aware of is that the incarceration centers were not ready for them. So were there makeshift barracks? Mm -hmm. Um, the sanitation wasn't terrific, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the sanitation, in fact, for the Japanese Americans was uh, an affront because um, the, they had a central bathroom for the women, central bathroom for the men, but they were all like toilets right next to each other without any partitions. No. That's the way they had it. So um, most people wouldn't disrobe, you know, it was uncomfortable Absolutely. in front of somebody else. Yeah. And therefore, um, it was a main issue mm -hmm. with the Japanese American community. Yeah. Now, later they did, uh, they never changed the toilet system, the sewer system. Mm -hmm. That remained the same. However, the camps were still not the ideal place to uh, live as a, as a place of dwelling, all right? Um, just an aside, uh, I was born in Minidoka, which is one of those internment camps. Oh, wow. All right? And uh, so my parents were in Minidoka, uh -huh. and my father went into the military, uh -huh. U.S. Army. Uh -huh. uh, my other relatives were in Heart Mountain, which mm -hmm. is what they based the movie, mm -hmm. uh, the movie and the play Allegiance mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. and, and the circumstances surrounding that. Mm -hmm. And then there were the other ones, and the one that we're going to talk about now is Tule Lake. Mm -hmm. Tule Lake was the biggest Camp. incarceration center, yeah. and at the peak there were about 18,000 people. Now, if you look at the area that it covered, it was pretty extensive. Mm -hmm. Now, if you lived in, uh, th they had what they called sections, and each section had barracks, and based upon the barracks, that's where you live. Now, you have to look at the conditions that they lived in. The separation between rooms was a sheet or a blanket. So you could be in the next room, and I'm in this room, and the only thing that separates us it's a, it's a, is this it's a little blanket yeah, on a rope. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So it wasn't the ideal condition. Yeah. So now you think of 18,000 people, incarcerated people in there. Tule Lake. It was uh, the biggest. But also that was made into a segregation center, mm -hmm. which is where the people who refused to go into the military and yeah. refused to go into the camps were placed. Now, some of them were placed in isolation, mm -hmm. those who were troublemakers. But the thing that's important to know is that the Japanese American community despised those people because they were not complicit with the orders that were given, and they gave the Japanese Americans and a bad, uh, a bad, bad name. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, but this particular location, Tule Lake, there is a group called Tule Lake Committee, and their whole purpose is to educate the public mm -hmm. on About the, camp. the purpose of, of Tule Lake um, and, and why people were placed there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but also to kind of historically salvage what they can so that people can actually see, based upon the experiences that uh, the Japanese Americans lived under, mm -hmm. that they could actually experience mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. Now. The issue with Tule Lake Committee right now mm -hmm. is that they're looking at this major center, and there's an airport there. 
So the challenge that they have now is the airport, which has a 30-year lease, is now, it's at the end, well, actually originally it was a 40-year lease. Mm -hmm. But they tried, the city of Tule Lake tried to curtail it to 30 years. Now, what happens, though, is that they want to build this wall, similar to what Trump wants to build around <laughs> Mexico, mm -hmm. <laughs> an eight-foot-tall wall, mm -hmm. three miles long. Mm -hmm. Now, that's going to border the part the of the historical site. The now, you've got to remember, the, the airport is actually on the historic site as well. Yeah. So it's going to border the historic site. Mm -hmm. And the concern is that the, there's a, a group or an organization called California Environmental Quality Act. Mm -hmm. When the original lease was taken with the city of Tule Lake yep. and Moda County Airport, who mm -hmm. runs that operation, mm -hmm. there was no consideration for environmental studies. So what's happening is they want to now do a study. Stay no. Now the airport wants to say, well, the environmental. Oh yeah, it was not there 30 years ago. It wasn't so there 30 years ago. So why should we go it through it again? Exactly. Now the issue then becomes okay. It's like when you buy a house. You bought a house 40 years ago. There were certain requirements, fire conditions, environmental conditions. Well, now you buy a house today, you have to comply with all the Absolutely. new rules. Yeah, yeah. So all they're saying is, well, we want to do a study, even mm -hmm. though you didn't do it 40 years uh -huh. ago, mm -hmm. we want to do it today mm -hmm. because we want to study the historical impact it mm -hmm. may have on the Tule Lake site. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they want to put a hold or an injunction against to them the process, continuing you know, the wall. Yeah. Now, the wall will take about five years to construct. Yeah. And the cost is about three and a half million dollars. Wow. But the issue that they're addressing is the wall is going to be eight feet tall mm -hmm. and three miles long. Mm -hmm. It'll border the historical site mm -hmm. and it'll block access, access to the, historic to the site. historical site during that five year construction yeah. period. Okay. Now, the issue with the FAA and the airport is that they're saying that you need this some type of offense. I'm sorry, it's offense. Mm -hmm. Some type of offense to keep the wildlife out. Now, the regulation states that if you do not control 20% of the property, you, cannot, you cannot construct. So that means that the FAA will not give money to Moda County Airport mm -hmm. to construct the fence, mm -hmm. which because is in a way blocking exactly it. Blocking the situation. Right? Yeah. And, and they can't get the three and a half million mm -hmm. to start the construction. Mm -hmm. The other issue is environmental, environmental issue mm -hmm. from the standpoint that the fence will border this historical property. So there's a noise issue. And, and since the business that they have is crop dusting, there is a pesticide issue that may contaminate the other side. Mm -hmm. So those are the issues that uh, they're faced with. Yeah. So now the Tule Lake Committee, what they're doing now, is they're getting the California Environmental mm -hmm. um, Quality uh, Control, Organization yeah. mm -hmm. to do a study. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will then continue to block the construction of that fence. Otherwise, um, they may lose funding from the government. Now, the issue is that this is both a state historic landmark and, and a federal. national sure. federal landmark site. Yeah. So you have two organizations that you have to fight with. And two level, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And unless they can get that resolved, mm -hmm. um, they may continue this for a prolonged period of time. Yeah. So we just have to gain time. So we're gaining to, to time exactly. basically to delay it. Yeah, okay. The other thing is now, if, if the administration has its way, it's trying to cut funding for the National Park Service. They're also trying to cut funding for and, and restructure what is considered yeah, park, park service. service. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I know. You know, and they it's also have, so it's, it's kind of yeah. uh, futile, right? Yeah, yeah. So you may get this delay, but then they may say, okay, it's no longer a national a park, monument. Yeah, so yeah. so therefore, you cannot make too much noise. You can't make too much noise. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a Walking tread lightly, legs, yeah. tread lightly, yeah. you know, on, on this particular um, area. But you have good news in New York. 
I have good news in New York. Okay. So let's go to the <laughs> so good news. So we'll go to the good news yeah. in New York, which we have a little more control over. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, there's a gentleman named Fred Quartamazzo. Yeah, Kitty. All right. Now, Fred Quartamazzo was an activist, activist during World War II. Uh, during World War II. Mm -hmm. But what people don't realize is that he tried before the war to enlist in the National Guard. Oh, see. And the Coast Guard. Oh, wow. And, and in each case, they rejected him because he was Japanese. All right. So then he but said, he was a citizen. It was American but citizen. But he was a U.S. citizen. He was, he was born in this citizen, country. He was born in this country. And therefore, you know, it wasn't, it was discrimination. Any shape but or it's form. Exactly. It's a it's discrimination. discrimination that's a right. And then he became a uh, shipbuilder. He, was a, he became a welder mm -hmm. in a shipyard. Mm -hmm. And he started as a welder, worked uh -huh. his way up to foreman. Mm -hmm. Well, one day he gets a call into the foreman's office. And he goes to the foreman's office and they said, you know, you, have you, to be deported. you can't work with us anymore. Yeah. You're Japanese. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. We can't allow it. Mm -hmm. So he got fired mm -hmm. right on the spot. Mm -hmm. So by the time Executive Order 9066 comes, well, he's already had a bad taste. Mm -hmm. of the and so he's saying, wait a minute. First of all, this is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. There's no due process. Mm -hmm. There's no trial. Mm -hmm. All right. And therefore, I am not going to go into the incarceration center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he disappeared. And <laughs> like many, many people during Vietnam, they disappeared. And, and I think he even had some alterations facially. Oh, yeah. So, you know, maybe not to recognize, to recognize as much, yeah. right, mm -hmm. that he looks more Japanese. Uh -huh. And therefore, um, but they eventually did find him. Yeah. All right. And they, they brought him into the incarceration center. Um, they tried him. Mm -hmm. uh, he continued to fight the case, though, mm -hmm. all the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And even though he lost, um, it, it was the, the, the main issue was that this is um, a loss of civil liberties. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. There was no trial. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the government in their Supreme Court case said, well, this is a military action, and therefore we don't have to consider those, okay. those issues. Okay, I, I need to wrap up. So what, what is the situation about Fred okay. in, in so, New York City? So in so, New York City, um, City Council, exactly. the Culture Affairs Department, uh, what's happened is in the City Council, we had, uh, first we had to get the petition signed, Resolution 792. Uh -huh. We got it signed. We got 34 signatures. Great. Then you had uh, you had 60 days to get a hearing. Okay. We had the hearing this past Wednesday. Okay. All right. Uh, I was one of the ones that testified that among other organizations. Mm -hmm. There were the Muslim community. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, legal attorneys that were there. Mm -hmm. LGBT uh -huh. organization. Mm -hmm. uh, Day Remembrance. Okay. Who were the ones who yeah. educate mm -hmm. on people that were interned on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And of course, there was a U.S. Japan Council okay. and Japanese American Citizen Great. Citizen League, which I represent. And so now, in New York City, in the calendar of New York City, you're going right. to have a day. So, so on the January. calendar, here's what's going to happen: the date, and the reason it's January 30th mm -hmm. is because that was Fred Kotomatsu's birthday. Okay. All right. So it's Fred Kotomatsu's birthday. Now, the next step is the Cultural Affairs will do a vote. Now, the chairman of the federal uh, the cultural affairs group said we should be able to get this through. Okay. So that that's a kind of indication it's positive. And since you have 34 mm -hmm. signatures mm -hmm. and there's 51 city council members, okay. you just need a majority to get it through. Okay. It should pass. Okay. Now that's the news. That's good news. And that's then news. and then what happens is now once it passes, it's not legislation, mm -hmm. so you don't need mayor's signature. And then we are done. And then it's done. You can declare um, January 3rd as Fred Kotomatsu Day. And then what happens is we have now educational programs mm -hmm. about the Japanese Americans, mm -hmm. internment, mm -hmm. how it relates to the Muslim community, and other immigrants. So I think that's all positive. Thank you right? so much for coming to the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. That was Face to Face. And uh, keep watching your news on Presenza.com. And hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much.